a passionate instigator and dynamic problem solver. Dr. Kevin Ross Emery, the host of the Dr. Kevin Radio Show, will be taking you outside the box, behind the curtain, and identifying the load of BS we are fed every day. And now, Dr. Kevin. Hello, 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 and welcome to this week's edition of the Dr. Kevin Show here on Ohm Times, where we're changing the world, wait for it, one ohm at a time. This week, our third week of the month, as we do just about every third week of the month, we lift our eyes, look to the skies, and we hear the voice of God. Oh, no, I'm sorry, that's not God, that's just Rod Stewart. Ah, who who brings us our planetary influences spoken in a godlike tone. And this, my children, are the things where astrology will support you and will hate you in the upcoming months. Ah, we have Rob come on once a month, tell us what's coming up in the in the following month in the skies. And we take that information and we make better decisions because that's what we're supposed to do. Get most, the most information we can to make the best decisions. And astrology is just like another kind of weather forecast. It's the weather of the stars and how that will be influencing and affecting the energies around you. And with that knowledge, you can make better choices. Uh, you can find out more about Rob at InnerCenterAstrology.com. That's InnerCenterAstrology.com. And if you have your astrology chart, now's a good time to take it out. Have it in front of you. And look, as Rob talks about where everything is, and as you look at your chart, you can see how it will personally affect you. Now, if you don't have a chart... Um, or you just have one of those freebies that you got off, but you don't really know what all that stuff means. And it kind of sort of sounds robotically like interesting, kind of sort of. They printed out something and you think it might have something to do with you, but you're not really sure. You might want to reach out to Rob at InnerCenterAstrology.com, get a chart, get a reading, and then tune in here every month as Rob will take your questions. I'll take your questions. And your questions can be taken at 202-570-7057. That's 202-570-7057. If with your chart in hand and a basic understanding of it and stuff like that, as Rob and I discussed, the astrology that's coming up in the month, you'll got to have a better idea of exactly what area of your life is that going to hit. Where, what, you know, is this going to hit my health or more of my personal relationships? Maybe it's going to be affecting my face to the world. Or maybe it's going to be affecting my face to myself. Does that mean you're two-faced? No. In astrology, we have 12 faces that we look out at. And the more you understand that, the more that you can take benefit of this monthly adventure that Rob and I take as we lift our eyes to the stars. Rob, welcome back. Thanks, Dr. Kevin. How are you doing today? Well, I'm waxing poetic. What do you think? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, as you always are, Dr. Kevin. (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes I'm waning poetic. It depends on the kind of day it's been. Uh, Speaking of waxing and waning, how are you these days, Mr. Rob? Yeah, I'm doing well. You know, um, Mercury has gone direct and Venus is direct and uh, still got some retrograde planets, but things, you know, getting some things in line and and moving forward. Well, and we're going to dive into that uh, in just a minute. I want to check. You got anything new and exciting coming up? Um. Let's see, I, so I uh, I do have a a, a new uh, six month uh, astrology coaching program that's just uh, getting started up um, now, and uh, and that's working with private clients both um, in astrology and just helping um, people let go of the old stuff that that we kind of um, you know the old patterns, the old negative thinking, the old limiting self-concepts and um, really 
letting go of those things and, and moving forward in, in sort of a peaceful, empowered way. So that's something that's starting up just now, and I'm excited about that. We're compliant with that. Hey, so you're helping them empty the old bedpan and <laughs> clean it out yeah. and give them a, giving them a new commode. Uh, <laughs> you know I have a way with words. We don't know what kind of way, but it's a way. Uh, well, that's good. Um, I'm going to let people know that we do have, for those people that are local to the Nashua, New Hampshire area, this weekend is our Psychic Arts Fair uh, that people can show up and get readings in person by uh, eight different readers at the New Hampshire Metaphysical Psychic Arts Fair. Uh, and you can just, if you're in the Nashua area, it's uh, Positive Street Arts on Bridge Street in Nashua, and you can go to NewHampshireMetaphysical.com for all the information. Saturday night, I'm doing a play date with Spirit with two fellow practitioners, Raina Wilson and Nancy Smith, where we're going to play with Spirit, and you get to show up and play along. How fun is that? Also, we have coming up in October our next spiritual interactive panel, uh, and this spiritual interactive panel is what are heaven and hell and do they exist? And three of our New Hampshire metaphysical practitioners and myself will be sharing our insights and perspectives. Again, you can find out all about all of this more at New Hampshire metaphysical.com. So those are some of the exciting things that, uh, I'm involved with coming up over the next few weeks. And I'm going to be, at the end of October, I think we'll be, I think we'll have another show just before it happens. I will be at Celebrate Samhain, uh, as well, uh, offering, uh, readings and healings and other such things. So that's Celebrate Samhain, uh, in Nashua, New Hampshire on the 22nd or 3rd of October. I'm sorry, I don't know exactly, but I'll, uh, be able to, Sure that up, but you put in Celebrate Silent Nashua, New Hampshire, and you will find that event. So now we've kind of shared what's, what stars are shining in our eyes. Mr. Rod, tell me about what stars are shining in the skies. Yeah, let's see. So, um, so we have the, the fall equinox coming up. That's uh, September 23rd. And uh, the equinox is always a, um, you know, it's sort of a special time, astrologically speaking. It's, um, it marks the halfway point of the astrological year. Um, and so basically the equinox occurs um, around September 22nd, 23rd of each year. And um, it's basically when the, when the earth is covered half in light, half in darkness, so that, you know, Sunrise and sunset are roughly 12 hours apart worldwide throughout the globe on that day. Um, the spring equinox on late March marks the beginning of the astrological calendar. And the fall equinox, um, which is happening just in a couple of days, um, marks the halfway point. So it's, it's, uh, um, you know, it's indicated by the sun moving into the sign uh, Libra, um, through the constellation Libra. And it marks a sort of new six month cycle. Um, and uh, it's a big, you know, it's a wonderful time to start new things and, and really um, put your best foot forward. And we'll get into more of the details of that in a second. Um, but um, let's see. So the sun, you know, in this, in this show, we track the, the, the path of the sun as it, as it traverses through uh, the zodiac. And, you know, everything orbits the sun, you know, literally speaking. And in astrology, the sun, as it transits the different constellations, it, it sort of highlights different areas in our chart, our birth chart. Um, and really, for, through the course of a year, the sun will touch all aspects of one's birth chart. Um, and in that way, sort of marking that solar year for that person and, and learning and growing and evolving. Um, uh, through that process. But as the sun enters a new constellation, as it does every 30 days, it highlights different themes and different um, archetypes, energies, expressions 
um, through which to grow and evolve through uh, for the, uh, the collective, the um, humanities collective. And for everybody, it does show up in a different area of the chart. And you mentioned that earlier, where depending on your chart, depending on the time that you were born, the day that you're born, and so on, um, Libra could be in your chart in the third house, someone else could be in the ninth house. And these would have much different expressions of how uh, some of the themes that one can look for, for uh, to bring more self-awareness and um, to work with the astrological energies, so to speak, of the month. And um, in Libra, uh, you know, Libra is all about relationships. It's about finding balance. And, you know, it, it really the, like sort of the end goal of the energy of, of the archetype of Libra is to find serenity through balance, through equilibrium, through calming down. And really, you know, what, one of the symbols of Libra is the scale. And, you know, scale, um, ideally, with the, the least amount of tension is perfectly balanced. And, and that's what Libra does seek. And it's about releasing tension, about finding the middle ground with others. Um, and so there's, there's real opportunities over this next 30 days um, once the sun enters Libra on September 23rd, to find balance in relationships, to really um, to put oneself in someone else's shoes, to really uh, see things from multiple perspectives. It's a wonderful time to cultivate empathic listening, um, but also healthy boundaries. You know, um, with any sign, you really have to talk about the... Um, the other side of the coin, the unhealthy manifestations of, of that type of um, energy and, and hum, humanity. And, and with Libra or Librosis, I guess you could call it, um, it can be things like um, polite dishonesty, you know, trying to keep the peace, but really dishonoring yourself or even dishonoring someone else just by trying to be polite, but by being dishonest nonetheless, you know, and of course, you know, white lies is, is um, certainly um, something that occurs. Uh, but, you know, this is a time to really shine the light on those areas. Where are you being politely dishonest? Where, where can you be more true to yourself and to others and, and that sort of thing? Um, you know, some of the other challenges with Libra is um, codependency. Um, there can be um, projection. Libra is a wonderful energy to find balance between self and other. But in, the, in so doing, sometimes we project uh, <laughs> things onto others and um, we've all experienced this consciously or, or not in, in life where um, we think they're the aggressor when in fact it, it could be ourselves that's sort of starting it. We're not even quite aware of that. Um, or in, you know, in, in small ways and big ways. And this is a, a wonderful time to really um, take stock and really um, notice how you're interacting with others. Where can you bring more peace and justice, fairness, equality into your relationships um, so that they're fair and balanced and um, you know, bringing peace and stability into those areas of life. Um, do you have anything you wanna add with that, Dr. Kevin? Oh, do I ever have anything I want to add? Maybe just a smidge. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, one of the things is, you know, Libra is definitely, as an air sign, is definitely a, is definitely a sign of communication. And I think one of the things that I invite people who are experiencing you know, wherever that Libra sun is showing up in their chart and what other, other things they have in Libra that will get illuminated. Because remember, you may not have a sun in Libra, but you might have a Venus or a Saturn or a Neptune. And as the sun is going there, it's going to be illuminating. It's going to be putting the spotlight on those planets as well. And that's, you know, again, some of the application part of astrology that actually makes it an extremely useful tool when you understand it. With the Libra communication balance, 
one of the things is, you know, I often say to clients uh, that are struggling communication with somebody, you know, do you need to say it the way you need to say it, or do you need to say it in a way that they can hear it? Mm. And sometimes we can't have both. And I think it's the library energy between I have something to get off my chest or that I need to share or a point I need to make, but there's a delicate balance of not wasting your time because you do it in a way in which the other person can't really take it in. Mm -hmm. And so I think that, that part of the, the, the energy we want to take from the library is how do I communicate in a way in which I can be best heard as well as feeling like I've said what I needed to say? I think it's also, uh, you know, I think it can be a, a, a library energy that you can draw on to also up the level of your communications with other people to be clear on what their expectations out of that communication are. And, you know, as somebody who's done a lot of relationship work in the last 30 plus years um, and helped couples and, and, and other relationship dynamics, not just intimate couples, but families and business partners or whatever, is to establish in, in, in a communication, what is it you're looking for in this communication? You know, the age old story, I just, I didn't want you to fix my day. I just wanted to share it with you. Stop like telling me all the things I could have done. Like that's not what I needed out of this communication. And so I think that we can lean into that library and energy to say, you know, part of communication is understanding the role you're being asked to play within that communication and balancing your needs and your expectations with their needs and their expectations. And how do you keep that balance? How do you keep that balanced? That's for the highest good of both people involved, not at the cost of one for the glorying of another. Does all that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and well said, and you know, um, you know, in, in related to what you said, it's, it can be really easy to get pulled into the orbit of someone else. And that's not what Libra is either. You know, um, it's, it's about, you know, that old saying of one half cup and a half cup equals one full cup. And that's not true at all. You know, two people, two complete beings um, meeting and finding balance between another, one another is, is really how I see it. Um, um, so yeah, yeah. So, so that's, that's the sun entering, uh, Libra. Um, and, 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 and I just want to remind people. So I wanted to comment back on something you said, remember that if somebody comes in with a half a cup of dirt and you're coming in with a half a cup of water, you end up with three quarters of a cup of mud. <laughs> and Keep that in mind with when you bring to the table what you bring and when you make the effort to understand what they're bringing to the table as well. The other thing is, again, if you have your charts, take them out. Where is this Libra sun going to happen? Because both the places in which you can benefit from the Libra and sun or you can have challenges because of the Libra and sun are going to be more so in that area of your life. And keeping that in mind, you may make some different choices. I just wanted to throw that in. Go ahead, Rob. That's right. That's right. And in astrology, um, it's, it's often said that where you have planets, you have problems. And that's, that's generally true in the chart. Um, so, you know, when the sun, if you have any Libra planets and, and things of that nature, which I certainly do, um, the uh, you know the sun is going to shine light on those 
elements um, over this next month or so. So, um, so you know, we do have. I, I do want to mention that Mercury went direct. I believe it was on September fifteenth or something along those lines. And and when Mercury goes direct, um, it was in retrograde motion for the past three weeks. Um, and once it goes direct, it, it basically that's when the planet appears as if it's regaining forward momentum in the sky. Of course, it was always moving. It's just from the per perception of here on Earth that it seemed to go backwards for three weeks. Um, but with Mercury direct, um, there's a lot more forward momentum in terms of one's thinking, one's plans, one's um, mental uh, capacity, I guess you'd say. When Mercury's retrograde, as it was for, for three weeks, um, the past three weeks, it's a real time to, to look back, to reevaluate, um, to check your T's and dot your I's and that sort of thing. It's a, it's a great retrospective time to really um, take stock and um, make adjustments and rework things of the past. Um, not that, that it's the only um, use of, of those three weeks of Mercury retrograde, but, it's, um, but it is a great way uh, um, time for that. But now with Mercury moving forward, um, it's sort of like full sails to the wind um, as Mercury's picking up speed and moving forward. And, and um, archetypally in astrology, it's a great time to move forward with your plans, with your thinking, um, with the things you've been pondering these past uh, three or four weeks. Um, and so I wanted to mention, wanted to mention that. Um, uh, do I, before I go into the full moon, Dr. Kevin, do you have any, do you want to mention, do you want to talk about Mercury retrograde at all? Well, I plummeted Mercury retrograde, the retrograde part of it, pretty well last time. Now, Mercury is going direct, and it's going direct in what sign? It's in Virgo. So, um, yeah, Mercury's at about 10 degrees Virgo, so it'll be moving through Virgo until October 9th. Um, okay. And, so, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, so, well, I, I, I just I remembered a, a great uh, uh, quote from you last time. You said, it's, you know, when Mercury retrograde, you go through all the file cabinets, you would reorganize it. And then when Mercury goes direct, you, you can, you know, then reorganize the reorganization and, and move forward and on, on with your life. And I, I think that's a pretty good metaphor. Yep. Well, Mercury was closing down its retrograde. I tore my whole office apart, and now Mercury is direct. I'm putting it back together with a new paint. <laughs> sure. So, so yeah. So it's definitely a time to to put it together, um, and you know, and to take that energy and know that starting in October 9th, Mercury is then going to be in the same time of the Sun, and even though they're they're not immediately conjunct there that will be happening and so you're gonna you can take that energy of all of the things that you came up with in mercury retrograde and i'm not saying wait until mercury is getting close and conjuncting and hanging out with the sun but it's a particularly high to take the balancing energy of Libra and that Mercury energy, because Mercury, Mercury likes being in Libra, and really apply all of this tearing your life apart uh, in the process of putting it together. Does that make sense, Rob? Yeah, uh, I, think we're, I think so. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, we're, getting, we're really getting down to the details of Mercury and Virgo, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, as with Mercury, it really speaks to, um, the way in which the collective consciousness of humanity is thinking and perceiving things and where their mind is at. And in Virgo, it's about diving into the details, organizing things in life. I know for me, I've been organizing all sorts of stuff the past four or five weeks. And, um, and it's great. Mercury in Virgo is fantastic at getting into the details, 
um, finding the problem, fixing the problem, finding a solution, all that stuff. And uh, so it's a great time to go over whatever data you have to do or whatever you need to do. And then when it enters Libra, um, October 5th, um, you know, th that's a time to, again, with the sun moving Libra and this focus on relationships and finding balance and having conversations and really um, smoothing over some things, perhaps some relationships that, uh, that are needed. Well, <laughs> what happens is you make all this change, you, you, uh, you rearrange your kitchen, and then when the Mercury moves into Libra, you get to charm and grace and bring harmony to everybody that lives in the house that the new, the new kitchen is a better, better functioning. Right. So you have to sell it. Libra is when you're selling what, what Virgo discovered and a change for you. <laughs> right on. <laughs> Just another way to look for it. Yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> okay, so I think that probably any second now we're going to move into our first break. Um, and I think when we come back, you can jump into the moon and the rest of the aspects. And there it is. I must be psychic, or I can tell time. We'll be right back here on the Dr. Kevin Show. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Ohm Times. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Vox Novus, the new voice. Vox Novus, the new dimension. Vox Novus, thought and movement leaders who will share from their experience and offer tools to help us navigate our rapidly changing world. My name is Victor Furman. Join me every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern on Own Times Radio for Vox Novus, the new voice. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free, ascendinghearts.com. If I could be you. And you could be me. For just one hour. If you could find a way. To get inside. Each other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to our monthly planetary influence with Rob Stewart from InnerCenterAstrology.com. Uh, and Rob, moon me, Rob, moon me. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but, I, I, but I'll show <laughs> you. <laughs> but uh, so, the, um, so we have a full moon um, September 29th. And it's a pretty charged one. I mean, it's a full moon in Aries. And uh, full moons, of course, as we talk about every show, is, is a time of fruition. It's a time of um, completion and release and um, choices and, and um, oftentimes emotional tension um, with a full moon. You know, um, the old saying, lunatic is a, is a lunar, <laughs> is derived from um, the word lunar and, and things of that nature. So it's, it, it's, it's sort of a um, um, energetically charged period of time as I, as I know it is for me, you know, sometimes I, I, I don't sleep well so during a full moon. I know um, friends that work at schools and the kids are more charged, all that stuff. Um, but, you know, a full moon in Aries with the sun and Libra, it, it brings into, it highlights 
um, areas of life related to self versus other. You know, um, the you know that's the classic uh, book title of humanity. You know, related to relationships and um, needing to assert your own self, but also on a relationship or vice versa. Those types of things. Um, these types of things can really um, there might be opportunities um, to um, to work with some of these themes around the full moon. This one's particularly charged because Venus is making a sextile to Mars, which brings with it some, some real charge and, you know, even, um, you know, uh, sexual type of energy. Um, but also Venus is squaring Uranus. And that brings some um, nervousness, but uh, of course, excitement as well. Um, it, it's sort of a um, unexpected, the, the, you know, I guess the, the thing I'd, I'd, um, I would say to everyone is, is be mindful of outbursts or, uh, you know, like, oh, I just need a, a trip for myself or something like that. You know, th there can be themes of needing, needing more space or needing more freedom and, and that sort of thing. These certainly can, uh, are in the sort of the ethers of the archetypes for this full moon on September 29th. Um, and let's see, you know, Aries is ruled by Mars, the full moon's in Aries, and that's ruled by Mars. Mars is in Libra, conjunct the south node of the moon. So this suggests that there is, there's the possibility of some old habitual relationship patterns to be emerging during this time. So, you know, if, you know, think of Mars and Libra on the south node, there could be some old, um, uh, Mars and Libra, uh, you're being aggressive. No, you're being aggressive. Or no, didn't you say you wanted to do that? No, you know, those sort of conversations in relationship, there can be some real projection and, and um, you know, who's the angry one here? <laughs> Neither one knows, or they're both angry or, or something along those lines. Um, so um, also, you know, decisiveness, um, indecisiveness, I mean, um, you know, Mars, or excuse me, Moon and Aries opposite the Sun and Libra, the, the idea of decisiveness versus indecisiveness, and, um, and then, uh, you know, the, the, um, the damn breaks or something like that, and you're like, you know, that's it, I'm going on this trip, or whatever it is, <laughs> it's that sort of thing. Does any of this make sense to you, Dr. Kevin? Do you pick it up when I'm coming down? I picked it up, I threw it over the sh my shoulder, I took it into the woods and I ravaged it. So, um, so here's, here's a couple of perspectives I would like to shoot out there. And then you can tell me if I'm a lunatic, since that's our word for the day. Um, you know, it's like the scratch and the itch. And sometimes you don't know whether the itch comes first or if you just scratch something and an itch actually follows it, like a mindless scratch. Mm -hmm. And what I want the listeners to think about during this with the sextiling Mars and Venus, the Uranus interplay, the moon in Aries in a full place, and that sun in, in the opposite place, that, first of all, during this three to four day period where it's going to be at its height, let's say three days it's going to be at its height, you're going to feel like you have an itch that you don't know how to scratch, that it's just kind of sort of irritating you. And so you're just, ir you're, you're irritation looking for a reason to exist. And that brings into that, no, you're being that way. No, you're being, it's like, those that are closest to us become the place where we put the blame for the itch, even if they have nothing to do with it. Because we have this itch, and we can't scratch it, and we don't know what the itch is, but the itch is irritating, because itches are irritating. Mars here is, can be, make you feel a little irritated, the full moon in Aries, you know, and that, to me, is 
beware of two patterns. Are you the person in the per- past that had to really work on finding more empathy, compassion, and not having it all about you in the past, and you really worked hard to, to develop those skills or to step into those emotions? Are you going to backslide? Are you the person in the past, or are you the person in the past that could be really selfless to the point that you're a friggin' martyr and get off the cross, we need the wood? This resurgence with this self node, you know, this self node dancing, you know, actually it's kind of like thinking like one of those cage matches for Worldwide Federation wrestling. They're all in the cage together. And they're all digging off each other, okay? And so they're all giving each other more energy because they're all playing sex styles and they're playing op- oppositions and they're playing, you know, all sorts of stuff is going on in this match. So especially at the height of the full moon, pay attention. Don't take out your irritating itch. Don't scratch it with the piece of people closest with you to you by, by, by picking a fight. If you've worked very hard to become a healthy version of selfless and selfish in a way that's healthy, no, whichever way you came from to get there is a place you may slide back. So just be aware of that, that this is that place. And, and because of the signs and the stuff, this is the one that feels like it's the closest, closest analogy of what would happen with people that, that do that. And, you know, and it could be that your selfless, your selfishness is really almost your inability to, that you had to put yourself in somebody else's shoes. And, you know, it may not have been intentional self, selfishness, but you finally realized that it really was selfish. So these are the things that I see kind of banging back and forth. Now with Uranus, we got that unpredictability and we got some electricity going on and it's playing in the Venus Mars thing. So if you think that a, a harmless, a har- to follow a harmless urge to just give a little quick kiss to a stranger and no one's the worse for wear, <laughs> guaranteed five people will be filming it and putting it on Facebook. <laughs> Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. And you know, um, with the ruler varies uh, Mars conjunct the South Node. You know that Stephen Forrest, the the astrologer, um, always talks about the South Node being uh, the bottle. The North Node is the AA meeting. You know, so with the ruler of Aries conjunct the South Node for this full moon, there's the temptation of going to the old pattern, the old habit, the old bad uh, pattern that, of course, we all have in whatever area of life it is. Um, So um, be mindful of that and catch yourself as you can uh, with regards to whatever the bottle is for you in this type of, uh, on that weekend, the last weekend of September. Yeah, I mean, you know, if it's a bottle for me, it would have to be Dom Perignon or, you know, Cavassier VSOP because those are the kind of bottles that you hang out with when you're fabulous. Okay, moving right along. All right. Well, so um, October 3rd through October 6th, um, I wanted to mention that period of time because we have Mercury trining uh, Pluto, um, and it's an out-of-sign trine. Um, but it's a powerful period where there's, there can be some real powerful words that are coming through, you know, the, the courage to say what needs to be said or, or to call a spade a spade, you know, that sort of thing, to be a mover and a shaker. And, um, and so, um, first of all, during October 3rd to October 6th, I would certainly expect some headlines related to deeper truths coming out, food on Capricorn and Pluto and Capricorn trining Mercury and Libra. There might be some justice. There might be some um, information that that comes to light during that period of time, October third or October sixth. Um, but I also, you know, be mindful of the power of words. You know, in your own individual lives, 
Uh, because Pluto trining Mercury, one can speak forcefully and powerfully and not even know <laughs> the effects, the ripples that it has. And October 8th through October 10th, um, we have Mars square Pluto, Venus opposing Saturn. So this is a real um, potentially challenging time for areas in relationship. If there's relationship challenges um, for anyone, um, this is October 8th through October 10th might be a time where there's some friction or, or working through some of these, some of these um, themes. Um, you know, anytime Venus is opposing Saturn, there can be this more seriousness in relationship. There can be this, um, there's also a focus on money, on Venus representing money. Um, but, you know, this is a time to, to mark on your calendar be gentle with yourself, be gentle with uh, those people whom you're in relationships with, friendships, um, spouse, business, you know, um, whatever it is. So I did want to mention all this. You know, with Mars square Pluto, October 8th through October 10th, there can be a lot of anger, rage, you know, that sort of subconscious stuff that's just neat, wanting to get out. So um, find healthy outlets for um, releasing the frustration, you know, I'm a big fan of, of when you need to do that, uh, you know, driving in your car and just let it out. <laughs> you know, people can think you're listening to music or singing along with music, but, um, you know, to, to, to honor any frustration that might've been built up and release it in a healthy manner. Um, of course, um, not through your driving, but through, through your voice, um, if you can do that, you know, um, so yeah, so, uh, keep, keep your eye open for October 8th or October 10th. Any thoughts on that, on that one? Yeah. Where we have both Mars and Venus as players. So now we have a different cage match <laughs> and we have different hookups in that cage match. I'm really liking that analogy. I may never use it again, or you may get sick of it. But, you know, you got to admit, it works, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, one of the things is, when you look at the planets, know that your words during this time frame have inherently the power to transform, even transmute the relationships that you're in. These relationships are most likely to be your romantic and or most intimate, close relationships. This is not, you know, saying something snippy to the, to the, to the, to the counter person at Dunkin' Donuts and, you know, they go out and, you know, off themselves because, you know, they couldn't take another mean customer. This is your this is your close relationships. And all I could think of was the analogy for me is the wine. Some wines are best when they're aged over time. They get a better flavor when you air them properly and aerate them. And that's true with relationships. Sometimes they need some airing and over time, a good relationship becomes like a fine wine better. But those wines can always turn sour. They can always become vinegar. They can always go bad. And there is, a, there is words that may be forgiven, but will never be forgotten, that will come out now if you are not living in a self-disciplinary reality. You're going to have stuff that maybe you feel like in the past you've talked about, but wasn't really heard. Maybe it was heard. And this goes back to one of the qualities and characteristics of the Libra son is knowing the difference between I heard you, no, you didn't. And the person going, no, you didn't because you didn't do what I said, or you didn't agree with me. Well, no, 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 that's not what it's about. You can hear somebody completely and not agree with them or not choose to make change. But this is a time when 
an old festered wound, an unresolved issue, something is going to come up and it will come up with such force that you, instead of aging and aerating the wine to make it better, you turn it into vinegar. So be careful. There is, this is a potential for great growth, but an equal potential for great damage to be done to a relationship. Does all that make sense, Rob? Absolutely. And well said, well said, you know, um, yeah, I mean, we, we've all had those moments where in, you know, saying words that can really cut to the heart when you don't really mean it in that way, or you didn't mean to take it to that level. And this is one of those times that, um, to really be aware that, you know, if this is a time when those words can really, um, ripple out in ways you wouldn't want them to, you know, in a, from a cool head. So, um, yeah, so yeah, well put. And I, yeah, hundred percent do the same way. So um, as you realize something is unresolved, as you realize that there's a place where you feel like they didn't hear you or they didn't make the change that they agreed to or that you requested or whatever, Seek out your solid closest friend that you can rant and rave to that can maybe give you a modicum of common sense before it's over. Go do a workout. Rob said drive in a car. Go take a big walk. Go to a punching bag. Punch a gym a couple. Because you're going to have built up energy. And this is one of the problems is it's kind of like that build up energy that you get when you go from really bad constipation to explosive diarrhea. So don't <laughs> shit on the people you love. Oh, uh, it's, it's a good one. <laughs> That's perfectly legitimate. Isn't that not a perfectly legitimate analogy, Rob? That's a metaphor for that. Absolutely. Um, a right, metaphor well, for the ages. For the ages, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, cage matches and... And uh, bowel movements to hidden all the ones today. Uh, the good ones. Okay, so October 14th, there's a new moon in Libra, and it's a solar eclipse. So we're entering uh, solar eclipse season here. And uh, solar eclipses are a really big turning point. They, um, they're sort of a new moon um, on steroids, and uh, they really mark um, big changes in life um, every year, happens every year. Um, and sort of the, the image that um, is often spoke of, it's sort of like you cross a bridge and you can't go back. You know, it's just life moves on and, and things move on. And so this new moon um, solar eclipse is in Libra, 21 degrees Libra. And, um, um, and so, you know, it's, again, it's, it's, there's this there's a theme about shining a light on areas of relationship bringing fairness you know finding middle ground in relationship you know we live in a world that have endless perspectives and in your relationship you only have to deal with two <laughs> um and two's hard enough because the two there can be um opposition <laughs> squares et cetera, et cetera. but but um you know, over this next six months, with this new moon indicating a new beginning in the, over this next six months, um, it, it's, you know, it's a great time to look at where am I projecting? What am I projecting onto others in my life? How am I being projected upon myself? And not getting caught up in that um, hall of illusions, you know? which to me, from my perspective, that's so much of what life is about. We're projecting upon others, we're being projected upon ourselves, and we get very confused in the process. Um, and, you know, I'm a big uh, believer in that, you know, the things that we see out in the world that really irritate us or anger us or, or um, and, he, uh, and also the things we love and we cherish and we admire, they're all reflections of things within our own self. And we can't see what we don't know. And so if you see someone being a real jerk or a real 
egomaniac or a real, you know, whatever it is, um, I'm a strong believer that it's, it's simply reflecting something that's within self that um, triggers us. And uh, there's the, the, the most direct way of working through this type of thing is to go within oneself and, um, and make peace with that part within yourself through forgiveness and understanding and, and seeing how it is that one could act and feel in those ways. Um, but of course, that's a much larger discussion and, and uh, which we don't have time for today. But, but this is a real um, focus over the next six months. And this new moon is op- also opposite Chiron, conjunct Mercury. And so with the new moon opposite Chiron, it really focuses on also woundedness and sensitivity that we all have in our life. And with the opposite the sun and moon, we might see that in other people. We might see the woundedness and sensitivity in others and ignore um, the woundedness we have in our own self. But it's a, it's a call to really do the inner work and support that inner child within our own selves. Um, and, and that's a big theme moving forward. Any thoughts on that, Dr. Kevin? Oh, just one or two. Um, because of the location of this solar eclipse, and what day did you say it was again? It is October 14th. Okay. So October 14th with the solar eclipse and the new moon and where it's at 21 degrees of Libra. I feel like, again, apply it to where 21 degrees of Libra is in your chart. Because this is a key point to both taking advantage of, but also dodging the bullet side of every aspect um, of this particularly powerful aspect, which is going to set you up uh, in, in unfoldment for the next six months. It's not like some aspects which happen over a day or two days or three days and are done. This actually opens a doorway for a six-month path. And it's, and it's intense with the solar eclipse and the new moon. And it's going to hit how you want to be perceived as who you are in the world and what you do in the world and kind of what your relationship to the world is, as well as if you are in relationship, does that person support and promote you to do that and be that person in the world? Or are they not in harmony with you, with where they see their place in the world. I think that this is a place where people are going to dive into where, you know, do I feel like my closest people in my life, and especially if I have a life partner, but even if you don't, who the closest people in my life are, are they in harmony with how I'm here to be in the world. And it's going to be in the area of life that that 21 degrees of Libra shows up. But it's going to have an energy that is going to also be pointing out to you that you have to look as who you are in the world or who you, or how you want to change the world or, or interact with that world and the people you are traveling with that affect you and that journey, you have to add into that at this point that being able to delineate what part of is it from a true place of self and who your soul came in to be versus what part of it is, of it is being pushed forward in reaction to a wound that has not been healed. So if you are out in the world and you feel like you have to be the great white knight in the world and you have to be seen as the person that everyone can always count on and that you show up and you're everybody's best everything, 
Is that because intrinsically that's who you are? Or is it a wound that you're trying to overcompensate for? And this is a six-month journey to delineate and tear back what is a Band-Aid that's covering something that needs to be addressed and healed, and what is a true stepping into yourself. And if you are in a couple and you and your partner have a very different way of interacting in the world and you have had any feelings that how your partner interacts in the world is somehow negatively impacting it's going to show up in spades at this time. Does all that make sense to you, Rob? Yeah, right on. Right on. Well said. Rob, I'll see you in a month. Thanks for having me on, Dr. Kevin. Have a great month. Yep. You too. Bye. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.